الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين All praise to Allah and peace and blessing be upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear viewers Welcome to the new edition of the Forgotten Sunnah with a new episode. This program or this edition will be talking about the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or actually forgotten by many Muslim. As you are aware that we are commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to follow the Sunnah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran ما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم which means no believer men or women men or women when Allah have commanded them or decided or take a decision and his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we have no choice except to accept what Allah commanded us and also Allah سبحانه وتعالى said ما أتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا whatever Allah commanded you what Allah سبحانه وتعالى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has told us to do we should follow and do as he commanded us and whatever he told us don't do we should we should also don't do and uh, this is and also صلى الله عليه وسلم himself محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم himself told us he said من رغب عن سنتي فليس مني also he said عليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين بعدي عضوا عليها من نواجد follow my sunnah stick to it with your back teeth so we have two main sources we take our religion from two main sources take our religion and follow our religion and learn our religion from the Quran and sunnah because actually the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam it is actually the explanation of the Quran or you can call the commentary of the Quran. We cannot actually practice and implement and you know do our religion, follow exactly religion without the Sunnah. So today in this in this edition uh, we are going inshallah to tackle many Sunnah which have been forgotten as we uh, tackled on the uh, last episode. Today we will talk about you know the Sunnah of Rasulullah when we give name to the baby, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the bounties and he give us, you know, after يعني, waiting nine months for the, uh, our wives, our sisters, uh, after the delivery, after the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this gift of the baby, we should also choose the good name. You know, we're not supposed as Muslim to call our babies, our children, like, you know, Western name. Uh, we are Muslim. Uh, although, you know, that if, uh, if somebody who is a Muslim, he's a non-Muslim, and he became a Muslim, we are not going to force him to change his name. Unless his name is bad name. It has a bad meaning. Like uh, Rasulullah sallallahu when Islam was spread out, after Islam spread out in Medina and Mecca, many non-Muslim, you know, they embrace Islam. So Rasulullah only change, you know, those who had their names are, you know, bad names, or it actually, you know, it is going to, you know, affect on them on the long run. So Rasulullah only change a few people, a few names of people. So from the beginning, you know, when Allah gave you, you know, gave you this gift, you should first of all praise Allah, thank Him for that He gave you the baby, and you should really choose good name. This is the Sunnah 
you should name him, you know, Abdullah, Abdul Rahman. And Rasulullah he said, you know, the most favorite names in the sight of Allah are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. And the most, you know, uh, sound like, you know, have power or sound is strong are Al, -al, -al Harith. So either you give him Abdul Rahman, Abdullah, Muhammad, but you don't, if you're, you know, if you are a Muslim, definitely you will not call your son John or David, you know, because this is not the Arabic and Islamic name. But I wanted to clarify, there is no such called Islamic name. They're Arab names. So if somebody who is new Muslim, we're not about to tell him, change your name. You should be Muslim name. There is no such thing called Muslim name. But they're Arab names. So that's why, you know, Rasulullah Sallam told that we should really give good names to our children when Allah, alhamdulillah, when we got the children. Also, one of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam, on the seventh day, that uh, we usually it is on the seventh day. To give the name for the baby should be in the seventh day. And this is the sunnah. It's not obligatory. If you delay giving the name to your son or to your daughter, you know, after seven days, there's no harm, of course. But the sunnah to be on the seventh day. And the other, okay, other, from the sunnah for the boy, that when the boy reach, you know, he's seven years, seven, uh, sorry, seven days or older, from the sunnah of Rasulullah that we should take, you know, we take the boy, not the girl. We just take the boy and shave, you know, his hair. And then we go, wait, we go and weigh this hair. You know, maybe it's going to be about five gram, maybe six gram. Whatever the weight of the hair after we shave it, you better go to the gold market because, you know, they have very sensitive scale you know the gold scale is very sensitive so you go to this any gold market and you bring the hair with you and give it to the salesman and ask him say would you please weigh this hair and usually it will not exceed more than five to six gram you know so the price and ask him what is the price of one gram nowadays and i know nowadays the gold is very expensive so those uh, brothers who have babies nowadays you know they may you know going to be costly, but it's not that, you know, it's only five gram. And let's say if it's uh, 200 real, for instance, you know, uh, one gram by five, this is, you know, 1,000 real. So you pay 5,000 real, uh, sorry, you pay 1,000 real, you know, you multiply the weight of the, gram, the hair, five gram, six gram, on the price of the gold. And then let's say, as I said, you know, if it's five gram, then by 200 real, this is 1,000 real. You take this 1,000 riyal and you distribute it to the needy, to the poor people. This is a sunnah. But if somebody didn't do it, is gonna, this is harm the baby? Is this going to affect the baby on the long run? Definitely no. Absolutely. It is a sunnah. But you know, this is, you are actually, what you're doing, you are actually thanking, praising Allah that he gave you the boy or the daughter or the girl also, the same, or daughter. The same thing, you know, or, or sorry, I mean, your, your, uh, whether it's a boy or girl, it doesn't make difference. But the girl, we don't shave her hair, only the boy. This is the sunnah. So uh, what you should do, you just take the money of the price of the hair and just give it to the poor or to the needy. Whether you give it one person or you distribute it to more than one, it's still accepted. And if you can implement the sunnah, it is really preferable. Also, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam, that on the seven, you can do it, you know, the seven day or on after birth immediately. You can take the boy, even they have some ulama, you know, about this Sunnah in particular. Some ulama, they said it is not valid. But if, if you do it, it's not a gahar baby. And the thing, with, the thing is just we want uh, the first thing the baby hear we want them to hear Adan and Iqama. So the father, you know, usually the father, but if the father is dead, maybe his grandfather, his uncle, even his mother can do that. You know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be done by, a, by male, 
you know, by a man. No, even his mother can do it. But if his father is available, it is better that his father take his son or even his daughter. And then make adhan in his right ear. He make adhan in the right ear and then all the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah, ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya 'ala as-salah, hayya 'ala as-salah, hayya 'ala al-falah, hayya 'ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. And then you go to his left ear and then make iqama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. This is my brother and sister. This is سنة. You know, if you do it, Allah will reward you. But if you didn't do it, still will not harm the baby. But let's really, you know, take care of the سنة. You know, many سنة are people, many Muslim, they either they are not aware of it, or they forget about it, or actually. You know, they may neglect it. You know, they, they don't care about it. But, you know, we Muslim are being commanded by Allah and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to really implement and follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, from the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, you know, the, the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also, we should really, we should really, what you call in Arabic, tahseen. We, we call, we, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children, not only the babies, all your family, you know, you, yours, you also yourself should really get this habit, which is, you know, you recite some ayat of the Quran, like ayat al-Kursi, ahad, falak, nas, on the baby and yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu himself, before he sleep, even him, even... Rasulullah himself, which Allah has promised to protect him, even him, he read, al always, every night he recite Ayat al-Kursi and Qulullah Wahad, Qulullah al-Falaq, al-Nas, and he wipe all his body before he sleep. My brother and sister, we will take a break. Stay tuned. We'll see you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Ask Hoda. Dear oh. brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Hoda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way, and he asked about how can he help him. Very good question. Can we give a zakat to any of the Dawah temples? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of worship. It has to be paid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the guidance of his Prophet. Welcome back, brother and sister. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We will continue our uh, edition, the new edition of our Forgotten Sunnah. Also, I covered, you know, that we should, you know, make tahseen, which is we are hoping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting uh, ayat al kursi and qul Allah wahad and qul al falak, qul al rabbin nas on our babies, you know, that may Allah protect them. Also, there is a dua if you get you know, also to learn it and teach it to all your family member to do it. Uh, and that dua is, you know, uh, as you say, أُعِيدُكَ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ اللَّامَّةِ أُعِيدُكَ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ اللَّامَّةِ See, he said, I seek refuge in Allah to protect you from shaitan and from even the eye, you know, my brothers and sister, the eye, it is, you know, people can 
you know, can, people can really ha ha harm you. The people can harm even their own selves just by looking, you know, from the eye because al Rasul said, al -aynu haq, the eye is true. You know, many people get killed just because of somebody has, you know, uh, when he saw them, he didn't say, MashaAllah, he didn't say, Tabarakallah. So it is a good habit that when we see, you know, a baby is healthy or we see anything, you know, please us, uh, we should not become jealous from that person. We should, we should really ask, may Allah bless you, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Ma barakallahu lak, alhamdulillah, tabarak, ma mubarak. This is we should really don't become jealous, and then you may, you may hurt and may burden. You may kill your own brother or sister without knowing. Some people kill their own children by just looking to him, you know, in a very what you call hot eye, or you know, and then he didn't say mashaAllah, he didn't say tabarakallah, and then the, you'll see. Five minutes later, or one hour, or even one day later, that person, you know, or that boy, you know, he, he got sick, uh, or he got paralyzed, or he died, you know, because of somebody gave him a hot eye. So be careful, you know. That's why I say to my brother and sister, get in a habit to, to ask Allah protection by just reading Ayat al Kursi and Qul Allah Wahad, Qul Ahad bil Falak, Qul Ahad Nas, and also this dua. أعيدك بكلمات الله التامة من كل شيطان مهمة من كل عيل لامة. I seek refuge in Allah to protect you from shaitan and from bad eyes or hot eyes. It is a very good habit to do this, you know, all the time in our children and also on yourself. You know, as I said, Rasul الله عليه وسلم used to say, yeah, Rasul الله عليه وسلم used to do that, even himself who was protected by Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah promised him to protect him from evil from his enemy. Though Rasulullah used to do this every night before he sleep. Also, uh, from the Sunnah, which is uh, uh, forgotten by many Muslims, is uh, when you make dua for the sick person. And I want really here to tease the chance, you know. I want to really uh, to talk about visiting the, the sick. What happening, you know, what's really happening nowadays when the people visit you know, their relatives in the hospital. Uh, they bring with them candies. They bring with them chocolates. They bring with them some, you know, flowers. With my respect, you know, to other culture, this is not our culture as Muslim. See, the sick man or the sick woman in the hospital or your son or the sick child, he is not really in need for flowers. He is not in need for chocolate. He is not in need for, for anything, for food, or, or juices. He needs your dua. He wants Allah to cure him. He wants to recover as soon as possible. So actually, rather than bringing chocolates, flowers, and then just go to his room and be silent, no, forget about flower. Forget about chocolate. You know, this is not even our tradition. This is not our custom. This is actually, with my respect, other Western custom, you know, and actually I would say, you know, it's non-Muslim custom. We Muslim are commanded and requested when we go visit the, the sick person, we should make dua for him. We say to him, you know, أسأل الله رب العرش العظيم أن يشفيك seven times. When you go and visit the, the sick person in, his, in the hospital, instead of bringing him chocolate, you know, just go and also don't take long. I mean, don't stay long time. People sometimes go and visit the sick person, and this is not from the sunnah. You visit him, yes, but don't stay one hour there. Don't stay three hours. Don't bring your children and the whole family with you. And instead of actually, you are actually helping the, 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 the patient or the sick to cure, you actually make it again difficult for him. You are doubling the pain on him by bringing the children, shouting, crying, and just go by yourself or maybe your wife, or just two or three, you know, don't make it more than two or three. And then when you go there, and you say, Assalamu alaikum, then you make dua for him. You say, As'alullah rabbal arsh azim an yashfiyak. As'alullah rabbal arsh azim an yashfiyak. Seven times. This is actually what the patient needs. This is the, visiting the, visiting the sick, or the, you know, the, the ill in the hospital, or even at home, 
you know, this is sunnah. So it is also a very recommended sunnah. One of the obligation on me as a Muslim toward my brothers is to visit him when he's sick. Rather, you know, I go when he died, when he invites me, I should really respond to his invitation. When he died, I should follow his, uh, you know, I go join in, in his funeral prayer. One of these things also is to visit him when he is sick. But remember, he needs your dua. He doesn't need your flour or chocolate. Also, uh, one of the sunnah of Rasulullah is also when somebody died. Uh, unfortunately, many Muslims, they are not aware of the words, what he's supposed to say to the person who his loved ones died, his wife, his father, his son. You know, there are many people who said, you know, may Allah give you his life. May Allah give you his life. This is not the way. Or, you know, in Arabic we say, al baqiya fi hayatik. This is not the Islamic way. Uh, or, uh, and then the other guy said, you know, al baqiya fi hayatik, the other guy, hayatik inta. You know, your life. This is not the right way. Or, you know, uh, the right way when you say somebody, you say, tell him, you tell him, عظم الله أجرك. May Allah, you know, double or great, you know, make your ajr great. وأحسن الله عزاءك. This is actually عظم الله أجرك. أحسن الله عزاءك. May Allah make your ajr very great. This is the dua. Or other da لله ما أخذ ولله ما أعطى وكل شيء بقدر. This is also a, one of the sunnah. صلى الله عليه وسلم. You should say to your brother, إن لله ما أخذ. وله ما أعطى وكل شيء عنده بأجل مسمى أبرد لله ما أخذ وله ما أعطى وكل شيء عنده بأجل مسمى فلتصبر ولتحتسب everything Allah is the one who gave that boy that girl your wife your father Allah is the one gave it to you and he took him so is Allah is have the the authority the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority and the ability and the desire, you know, any time he wants. And he's the one gave us this boy, if he's your son, and he took him. All right? And then what we should do, it is to be patient, and then Allah will reward us. That's what you should do. But, you know, other words what I mentioned before actually is not from the sunnah. Also from the sunnah, when somebody... Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you uh, the boy, you sh what I am supposed to, when, when I go, when I knew about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, you know, gave uh, one of my brothers or, or friend, you know, a son or a boy, and anyway, a baby, uh, you, there is also some words, Rasulullah sallam told us what to say. You know, what we said, we say, shakart al-wahib, barak Allahu laka fil mawhub, may Allah bless the one given to you. بارك الله لك بالموهوب وشكرت الواهب وبلغ أشده ورزقك بره. You that he said. بارك الله. May Allah bless the one given to you, which is the موهوب. Given that means Allah gave it to you. And you, me also, you should thank the one who the giver. You should give. You thank the giver who is Allah. And may also Allah سبحانه وتعالى will give him. You know, raise him up. And he get the age of purity, and then he will be good to you. This is actually the right uh, congratulation for the one who really Allah gave him a boy or a girl. Anyway, anyone of your friend or your relative, Allah gave him, you know, a baby. This is the, the right uh, congratulation for him. Also from the sunnah uh, of Rasulullah sallam is when the wind blow. When the wind blow, and it's very strong, you know, like, you know, the hurricanes or the tornado or a very strong wind, you should not, we are not, as a Muslim, we are not supposed to insult or abuse, you know, the wind because this is, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one commanding, ordering the wind, and we, Rasulullah said, لا تسب الريح. All that you should say, Allahumma Rabbi wa Rabbik Allah. You, the wind. My Lord is your Lord. And you say, Allahumma a'tina khayraha 
وَخَيْرَ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ This is the sunnah. O oh Allah, give us his bounties, whatever you sent good in this wind, and protect us from the evil you sent with this wind. Give us the good bounties you sent with this wind, and protect us from the evil you sent with this wind. Never insult it. Brother and sister, we conclude our edition today. We're looking forward to see you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones. Selling the best with the cheapest price. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones. Selling the best with the cheapest price.